Stories from Love Death and Robots Volume 2. In this video, we will explore the scariest stories from Love, Death, and Robots Volume 2. Let's begin, shall we? Number 5 Snow in the Desert, Season 2, Episode 4. The story introduces a man named Snow, who is wanted on a planet where the heat of the sun will kill anyone in contact. Boris has hired a cabal of bounty hunters to find Snow. And while he is in a bar, he manages to kill two of them, but the third one shoots at his right arm, blowing it off. He is about to finish Snow when a woman named Harold shoots the bounty hunter dead, saving Snow's life. As his right hand grows back, the woman follows him home and he explains what an incredible healer he is. He offers her a place in his daytime tent, but she reveals her identity and her intentions. She is part of the Earth's central intelligence and is here to take him back to Earth if he chooses as he can regenerate, and by studying him, they can achieve immortality for everyone. He takes her to the bungalow he had developed over the years at the top of the mountain, asks her to get comfortable, and gives her a dress of her deceased wife. Snow's wife killed herself 123 years ago when she was growing old and he wasn't. Harold wakes up late to find Snow gone and hears the sound of an alarm in the bedroom. She realizes that a ship has landed near their hideaway containing Boris along with his goons. Snow engages in a fight with them, hiding and attacking them one by one when a bad guy shoots him in the legs. Later, Harold blows his head off before he could kill Snow. Unfortunately, Boris makes an entrance and shoots her in the head. Boris backs his gun, wonders why Snow lives on this god-awful planet after leaving Earth, and is ready to take his life when a massive synthetic robot arm bursts through his chest. Harold reveals part of her face, showing that she is artificial intelligence. Later, she reveals to Snow that she is a hybrid who was once human and has been alone for a long time. Snow in the Desert has a video game look, filled with cool action sequences. The gore and creepy regeneration of Snow's body parts are cringe to watch. It is a quick tale that features all three elements of the title, the love between Snow and Harold, who made a connection based on their loneliness, Death is a part of the gnarly fights and regeneration, and robots referring to Harold's synthetic body. <laughs> Number 4 Automated Customer Service, Season 2, Episode 1. Before we go forward, please subscribe to us. Your small click will help us in a big way to create more videos. Let's continue. The first episode of Love, Death, and Robots is set in a dystopian universe where humans have given their responsibility to the robots. From cleaning their houses to gardening the plants and tending to customer services, robots have replaced all human work. Here, an old lady moves a picture, but the robot is adamant to keep it in a specific place. The lady's dog growls at the robot and is consequently attacked by the machine, removing a chunk of its fur. The lady is terrified and runs with the dog in her hand. She is surrounded by the robot and it shoots lasers at her. The lady ducks, and the laser hit the aquarium killing the fish in a bloody manner. The chase begins as the lady calls the manufacturer who tells him the robot or the vacuum bot is on purge mode and will kill any life form within its reach. To stop it, they must distract the machine, and the bot suggests the lady sacrifice her dog, but she refuses. So the lady and the dog try to escape the robot in this gripping story. Automated customer service advocates everyone's primal fear that one day the robots will kill us all. It suggests there will come a time in our future when humans would let robots take over their houses, chores, and jobs, which is scarier than one hopes for. Although it ends in a hopeful tone, it also sets a creepy tone as if hinting at a sequel, which leaves us wanting more. The narration hasn't packed much in the 12 minutes of Runtim but it is enough to understand the loyalty and love between a human and her pet. It is a sweet tale, but the possibility of this happening in real life makes it scary enough to keep you awake at night and away from machines. Number 3, All Through the House, Season 2, Episode 6. On Christmas Eve, siblings Lee and Billy are awakened by the sound of rustling downstairs in their little house in the suburbs. They sneak downstairs, believing it is Santa Claus, to take a peek at him. Once downstairs, they saw a shadow figurine who looked like the jolly good man, 
but soon they realize it is a disfigured monster who looks nothing like the Sant Claus they saw on TV. The creature is shown to be a big, ugly monster with no eyes that resembles a blood red sack with a withered pair of limbs, a larger pair of insect like claws, and a mouth full of razor sharp teeth with a pair of hands projecting from the edges. The kids try to sneak as the creature consumes the milk and cookies but they unintentionally alert the beast to their location. The creature begins to approach the children frighteningly, enclosing them against a wall, before addressing Lee by her name in a hoarse voice. It judges her to be good and spouts out a neatly wrapped gift, which he then delivers to Lee. With Billy, he does the same, and after telling them to stay good, he leaves out the door. Lee and Billy return to their beds, shaken and terrified from their encounter, wondering what would have happened if they were bad. This is not an episode for children, but it is a truly creative concept brought to life in the best possible manner. The concept that Santu is some kind of crazy growling beast is both amusing and terrifying. It's presented in an almost humorous manner, with the way it coughs out these presents and gives them over smeared in saliva personifying this dark humor. All through the house, although being the shortest chapter, is a fantastic illustration of how you don't need a big runtime to present a unified tale. Number 2, The Tall Grass, Season 2, Episode 5. Laird, the protagonist of the episode, is reading a newspaper inside a train when suddenly the train stopped. A suspicious Laird gets up to inspect, stepping out of the train. The conductor joins him and informs him that they need to build steam. He then asks him to get on board, but Laird insists to grab a quick smoke out in the prairie. The conductor warns him to not wander, and before the train leaves, he will call for him twice then they will leave with or without him. Out there between the tall grass, he sees a blue light glowing and fading quickly. With a deep curiosity, Laird explored further into the tall grass and eventually get lost. Soon he hears the call of the conductor and he sprints toward the train. But before he could get there, he finds some monsters that attack him viciously. Soon they all surround him. While he listens to the train leaving the stop, he is about to lose his consciousness and he can only see the red light. The light is brought there by the conductor, who comes with fire and scares the monsters away, rescuing a scared liar. The conductor explains to him that it has been going on for a long time, and most of them were humans who wandered off in the tall grass. He goes inside the cabin after telling him that it would be best not to tell anyone anything since no one would believe him anyway. This episode of The Love, Death, and Robots has every element of a horror film the epic setup of the events to unfold with the blue lights within the tall grass. The siren-like sound calling out to liars, the monster, pale human-like monstrous creatures with piranha-shaped teeth, and the grand rescue attempt by the conductor. Visually, it is an appealing tale, which is not unheard of, but has never been presented in such a manner. <laughs> Number 1, Pop Squad, Season 2, Episode 3. Big monster! The main investigator and a futuristic-looking SWAT team have broken into what seems to be a rundown residence. It's crawling with cockroaches. There have been dishes in the sink for months, and the grown-ups have built bassinets out of drawers. While his team arrests the parents, he sees two toddlers, one of whom offers him his stuffed dinosaur toy. But that doesn't stop him from killing the kids. This world, it turns out, is ruled by the wealthy. The investigator is the leader of the pop squad, a group of goons with a badge that goes after breeders. The wealthy have complete control over the resources and prohibit anybody from having unregistered children. The rule exists so that people can live forever as long as the population remains low. The investigator has a moral problem, especially after his girlfriend shows off a toy animal identical to the murdered child's, which she received as a joke present for overcoming the dinosaur's vocal solo. Unfortunately, during a panic attack episode in his automobile, he examines the dinosaur toy and upon investigation, he notices a young woman who buys a package of toys and follows her home. He discovers her inside the home, where she is playing with her kid. They talk about why she had a child, and she tells him that Melanie, her daughter, makes life worthwhile. The mother believes he is here to kill her daughter, and thus attacks him. He defends himself and is about to shoot the baby, when the mother begs her not to. Finally, he leaves the house and is caught by his partner who heard the crying baby and misunderstood the situation. They both draw guns and shoot at each other. She dies on the spot while he is injured badly. He looks up to see the ancient building as rain falls down his face, finally succumbing to the wounds. Pop Squad enters the most horrific story of the season, 
even though the story doesn't show us, but the implied idea of killing little toddlers is sad and horrendous. This dystopian universe features wealthy men as monsters who wish to control the population to live eternally. It is unbearable and uncomfortable to watch, but the story of redemption is so gripping that you can't take your eyes off of it. Pop Squad explores the question, is it worth it to live forever if you can't find happiness within the world? That was all in this video. Do hang around for more film and pop culture content. Also, do leave a comment on your favorite story from this list. Stay safe and have a good one.